Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, add monsters to your room and uh, have them moving about in uh, different ways. So I'm going to demonstrate, this is going to be a slightly longer video than the others, because um, I'm going to explain three things at once. So um, in order to understand how objects move in Game Maker, we need to understand movement. So uh, you can see that if I want my, um, my character to move up, then it needs a direction of 90. If I want it to move left, it needs a direction of 180. If, it, if I want it to move down, then it needs a direction of 270. And I want it to move uh, right, it needs a direction of zero. So that's how movement works in Game Maker. So I'll bring that chart back on as we start uh, looking at code. Okay. So, um, what first thing I want to do is uh, just to show you that I have a monster in my room at the moment and it does nothing at the minute, okay? There's uh, on my object code for my monster, okay, there is nothing on there at all. So um, we're going to start looking at um, variables. So variables uh, you can think of as um, envelopes that hold values, okay? That's what a variable is really. Um, and we need to set certain variables uh, in, in, in Game Maker. It's different. Movement with a, with a monster is different than moving your character because you are controlling your character, so you're using key presses. Um, with monsters, you want those monsters to move independently, so they have to have certain values. So, for example, you have to set a speed for your monster. What speed do you want it to move at? Do you want it to move slower than your main character or faster than your main character? Remember that we set um, three as a value for our uh, main character speed because we change the instance by three each time we, uh, we, we, we press the left or right or up or down button. So um, I'm going to show you how to create some variables. So I just clicked on the variable definitions at the bottom and what I want to do is to add a new variable. Okay. Now the first variable I'm going to assign is one called speed. And it's a built-in variable, so we can just use the word speed. Okay, you can click there, or you can just click into the box. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're going to set a value for speed. So I'm going to say my monster is going to move slightly faster than my main character. So I'm going to set my speed to four. Also, what you need to do is to make sure that you select the right type of um, variable. Okay, so the right data type. So there are a couple of data types. I'll show you. I'm only going to deal with the first two. So real and integer, they're both numbers, okay? The difference between real and integer is that a real number is a decimal. So I could have 0.3, or I could have 1.3. An integer is a whole number, so there's no decimals, one, two, three, four, five, okay? So because we want a whole number to be used, we're just gonna use the integer data type. And as a matter of fact, most of your variables that you set will be integers. Score would be integer for one, for example, okay? I've, uh, also, when you create a monster, uh, so I've given this a direction of, of um, uh, sorry, a speed of four. If I play the game, my character will move to the right at a speed of four. Okay, my monster. So let's run it because I've given it a speed. Okay, so you can see that it runs to the left or to the right and then goes off screen. Um, that's because when you create an instance, it uh, Game Maker gives the object a direction of zero by default okay so if I applied a speed to my main character okay it would move off to the right at whatever speed I've set it okay so it automatically uh, moves to the right now that's okay when we start moving the object but I may might want uh, it to go um, left and right or or randomly choose whether it goes left or right uh, we'll deal with that in a little while um, but the more pressing issue at the moment is the fact that my monster is going through the wall. So um, we need to set up an event to stop that happening. So in the same way as we did for the character, we're going to set up a collision event. So you're going to add an event and you're going to select a collision event with object wall. Okay, for now, we will do exactly what we did last time and we'll set the speed to zero. So when I run the game, we are going to change that in a minute. Okay, this is just for demonstration. You can see that my monster stops now when it hits the wall. But what I want to do is to get it to go back the other way. Okay, so there are two directions that I need to think about. Zero 
and 180. Those are the two values that I need for it to go left and right. If I wanted to go up and down, it would be 90 and 270. Okay, so we're going to allow the program to choose the direction in which it starts and then to to uh, to reverse its direction when um, it hits the wall. So we're going to set another variable called direction, and this is also a built-in variable. Direction, okay. And again, it's an integer value, but this time I'm going to write some code in here. So I want it when it starts to choose whether it goes left or right. So I simply write the word choose. Okay, I open the bracket, and then I put the two numbers in that I want to use for my choose. So it's 0, 180. Okay, so I'm going to choose 0, 180. Okay, so that will choose whether it starts going left or right, and that's up to the program. We're then going to go on to the, onto the collision event again, and we are going to change the code we've got in here. I'm going to get rid of that because that was just for demonstration. Um, what I want to do is then, when it hits the wall, I want it to choose the direction again. So I'm going to scroll down to movement. And in movement, there is a set direction variable, which is this one. Okay, so you're going to drag that onto the screen. And again, as you did with the, with the variable, you're going to set choose. 0, 180. And what that will do, when it's against the wall, it'll choose a direction, and if it's still colliding, it'll choose the other direction. Okay, notice we don't use the relative, okay? We only use relative when we're dealing with keyboard movements. So let's play that and see what happens. Okay, so it hits the wall and then it rebounds. Hits the wall and rebounds. Hits the wall, rebounds. Okay, so that's brilliant, that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to show you now how to create another monster that goes up and down. So I can use the same sprite on different monsters. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on my object for my monster and I'm going to duplicate. And that creates a copy of my monster. So I'm going to call this one Monster V. Okay, I'll put it, I'll put it in I'll put underscore V. Okay, and I'll rename this one, right click. Um, rename and I'll call this one monster underscore H because I know this one goes horizontal this new one that I've got here is going to go vertical so I'm going to close these this one down to avoid any confusion okay so when I open up monster V it's got all the same settings okay because I've duplicated the object so this time in my variable definitions I don't want to choose 0 and 180 I want to choose 90 and 270 because that's going to go up and down. So I'm going to choose 90 and 270. So 90, 270. Exactly the same thing then with the collision event. I'm going to change the direction there from 0 to 180 to 90, 270. Okay. What I'm then going to do, I'm going to go into my room. And I'm going to drag in a monster V. So let's put the monster V there. Let's put a couple of monsters in. I'll put a monster there. And I'll put a monster H here. Okay. So let's run the game. So I should have four monsters. Two going left and right. one And two going up and down. Let's see if that works. There we go. Okay. So they're all going as we expected. Okay, the last type of movement I'm going to show you, and this is the last thing for this video, is random movement. So I'm going to duplicate my monster one more time. And this time I'm going to call this R, because I want random movement. Okay, OBJ monster R. You can name them whatever you like. Okay, there's no, uh, I've only called them that so you can see the difference between horizontal, vertical and random. Okay, let's go back to my workspace and let's open up the random one. Okay. So like I did last time, I'm going to go into the variable definitions. But this time, I'm not going to choose. I'm going to let, let it create a random direction. So if I, you can use a command called I random. Okay. So I random. 
open a bracket, uh, and again, we want it to go in any of these directions. So any direction from zero to 360 degrees, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. I random, in the brackets, what's the biggest number it can be? 360. So what that will do, that will choose a random integer value, so a random whole number between one or zero and 360 degrees. Okay, and it'll move in that direction. And as we did last time, we want to do the same thing for the wall, for the collision event with the wall. So let's come over here, and rather than choose, I'm going to use I random, open a bracket, 360. So when I run the game now, I should have three different monsters. Did I put the monster in the, I don't think I put the monster in the world. No, I didn't. So let's go back onto the room, and let's drag in, uh, Monster R. Of course, you could use different sprites for these monsters. That's absolutely fine. So my random monster is going to start in the central by the central pillar. So let's run the game again. And now you can see that my one monster is now going off at random directions when it hits the wall. Okay. So that's how you can have three different types of movement in your game: horizontal, vertical, and random.